Sure. Welcome, everyone, to another edition, another episode, another sequel of the C-Suite Unfiltered. And we need some music or something. Yeah, <laughs> um, definitely. I'm out in North Carolina. Lee's in Bellingham. So uh, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, welcome back to the pod. Thanks for doing this again while you're in North Carolina. Do you want to do it like you just did to me of what we're going to cover? Should we do that like at the beginning? I don't know. Teaser. See if it helps with their tension. I'm going to be honest. Something's really tripping me up. My camera is not mirroring me. So it's like it's throwing me <laughs> off. <laughs> Does that make sense? You know, you know, yeah, like I get you. My I'm zoom's always on mirror. So now I'm like yeah. staring at myself. It feels weird. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's go. Let's let's maybe jump into some topics. What we're going to go over today on the podcast. We are going to do more behind the scenes. North Carolina update, South Park, Mike is down there, and I want to ask some hard-hitting questions about some of his recent videos. Then, if you uh, have a life, you probably didn't see this next thing, but we're going to talk about Lawnsite, <laughs> which is uh, funny because we just talked about Reddit. Lawn site is essentially the Reddit of the lawn care community, and Mike got in some drama there. And then the last thing I wanted to ask you about, Mike, is your thoughts on the Apple Vision Pro. Very interesting product that Apple just released a couple days ago. Dude, as you as you were you're talking there, I'm actually jumping back into the lawn site thread to see what else is going on because um, a lot goes on very quickly there. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, let's jump into the first thing. Go ahead. Let's jump into the first thing. I okay. Yeah. So, North Carolina update. So you've been posting daily vlogs. Shout out Zach. I know he can't hear me, but he's in the room with you. So shout out Zach and just the media team covers. I'm sure he's got help behind the scenes as well. But just awesome. No, he's most of the Hello. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. Um, but I, I wanted to dive into one specific video. So it was Sunday's video. I think it was day four, maybe day four or five. Um, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Di- oh, sorry. I'm thinking Sunday was when we actually Sunday was when we oh, did yeah. the, the uh, interviews, but then it came out Tuesday. So sorry. I don't remember what four was. Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're thinking of your actual Sunday. I'm thinking of the YouTube release because those are a day or two behind. Yep. So it was the release that was on site. It was like day four or five on the count. And it ended, for lack of a better description, pretty real. Um, You said, and quote, that you needed to recalibrate how you handle the businesses. Um, So essentially, you were just like burnt out. You're like, hey, I'm burning the candle at both ends. I have all my other meetings. I have stuff for Augusta. Um, You know, I got co-pilot stuff. I got lawn care, web design, whatever other entities you have to stress about. And you're trying to start a business from scratch in 30 days. So what did that look like? Recalibrating how you handle the business. (laughs) Um, Yeah, like, so I hate resenting um, the businesses and managing the businesses. Like, because if I resent them too long, I'll usually try to get rid of them. (laughs) And honestly, so um, what I was, what was happening is those first few days, and it was just a few days, but like, um, I'm also trying to, emphasize this for the sake of the the video um because obviously like if i knew there was a i just need to put my head down and get something done i couldn't make it happen but um i I wanted to make the point because a lot of people hit this even though it might not be in three or four days it might be in three or four months Mm -hmm. right so um for me i don't want resenting the business and what i kept finding myself in those first few days doing is like man if i look at my phone right now i am not gonna like my life and um so like i would go do hold the board for like a couple hours and then I just knew, like, when I pick up that phone, like, I'd just be emails, texts up for, like, at least a, a couple hours, which I don't enjoy that. Um, and it's just part of what I need to get done. And so usually when I'm able to kind of filter those things in throughout other meetings, et cetera, it's not so bad. But when you're taking two and three hours, then it makes it really, it's just, I just resented it. I was like, oh, man. So, um, but, you know, if I had to, I could put my head down, and just knock it out, right? Just sleep less and just make it happen mm-hmm. but it, it was just a matter of t- it's just more or less time like um uh that that one that day was with a breaking moment uh, i was up to like four with co-pilot mm-hmm. and i need to wake up and like do something for i forget what that day so um yeah basically in terms of what it looked like for the business was hiring out the thing that i need to get done and that was door hangers and so uh, in the past couple of days uh, i've been able to have someone doing door hangers for me and we nice. you know started to get leads and things like that so it's been good Good. So would you say it was more of a recalibration of just your time or was it also like energy and focus? Like I know those things kind of go hand in hand, but I think in this instance, like I guess from the viewer's perspective, as well as my perspective, having worked with you, to me, it felt like you were saying, I need to recalibrate how I handle my energy is what I was thinking. Not just time. Like, does that make sense? Like you're yeah. putting 
Yeah, but I thought I had four hours. I thought I could like take. What do you? Oh, sorry, did you? Can you hear me? Okay, you're kind of yeah, yeah. In and out. Cool. Um, uh, I kind of thought I could do four hours a day. I thought I could get away with like doing a solid four hours of working locally in South Park, and so <clears throat> it just didn't work out that way. Um, and mostly because I thought I'd like with the time change, I'd go to sleep earlier, and I'd be awake up earlier and get ahead of everything mm -hmm. and like help the work in the business. Um, it just hasn't worked out that way. I've been up late every night. And so, or not every night, several of the nights. So um, yeah, it was just, uh, you know, it'd make better videos if I was working on the business. Like if I, was, if I was out there doing the sales, talking to people, all that stuff, it would make a better video. But mm -hmm. like, I'm not, I, I'm not going to let like you know, the franchise and co-pilot and VPP and everything else I'm doing suffer. So mm -hmm. um, what we're trying to focus on now is like, okay, I've hired the parts I need to get done for the business. And that if I had a full time run of the business, that's what I'd be doing. If that's all I was doing. Um, and then we try to do a bit for like two hours a day. So when I get, and I need to get film, we need to get something mm -hmm. for the video. Basically we're like, mm -hmm. okay, these are the things that we got to go shoot and let's go knock mm -hmm. those out. So, okay. Gotcha. So uh, I was actually talking to a franchisee today on a coaching call and they were talking about how do, how do I, how do you, how do we manage our time? So would, would you say it was like, did you have to become more rigid with your time structure or is it more like mental prioritization? What would, what would you say has helped you the most? In this ha last couple of weeks? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, like, is it being rigid think... with those times and be like, all right, an hour here, an hour there? Or is it like mental prioritization of this is what needs to get done? If it doesn't, like everything else doesn't matter. X has it's to just go. just realizing it was not sustainable. Like literally yeah. the, the first several days, every single night we went to bed after midnight finishing up the video because he'd be recording with me throughout the day. And then mm -hmm. he'd start editing at like five or six o'clock at night and right. he has to finish the whole video. Um, and then, you know, so I'm accommodating that and then I'm hopping into, oh, okay, I got to catch up on, you know, four other businesses and everything needs to go on there. And so, and then for me also, even it's knowing the stress of what you guys, knowing the stress you guys are under, even with several of the projects you guys are working on, um, doesn't help me at all either. So, uh, I usually like to be when, when I know like you guys, when I say you guys, like my direct reports are under a lot of stress, mm. I usually want to be in the business and I want to be dirty and so it kind of kills me to be this far away honestly when that's all yeah. going on i'm not stressed <laughs> <laughs> i'm enjoying all of my projects <laughs> Actually, it's funny i should share the story so we were originally going to do this a couple days ago so apologies for the people waiting for this episode to drop <laughs> we had scheduled um a time to meet and i can't text mike and it's 20 minutes after the time we had scheduled to meet and i text you I say, sorry, I was just getting yelled at by a customer for the past 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So someone had come by one of the businesses and wanted to give me a piece of their mind. So it was very fun. <laughs> That's why I made sure you still stayed at that location, sitting in the corner, bro. Yes, sir. <laughs> I was like, a good this punching fun. bag. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I was just a punchy bag. And the conversation literally ended with, well, if, if you'd like to take legal action, that is fine. But if you come back on site and harass my staff, uh, I will be calling law enforcement. So, super fun conversation I had the other night. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I was going to ask, though, I wanted to kind of go like another <laughs> layer deeper just because it is fun to honestly just watch the vlogs, even though I've had, got the pleasure to work with you for a while. Um, the vlogs are a different light, a different spin on how Zach edits, what he shows, what he emphasizes and just what you're going through. So what is your approach to balancing you personally? Not this isn't just as a business owner, you personally, you have a bunch of other businesses. What is your approach to balancing those and how do you prioritize the businesses that you currently have? Well, I can't say I'm a pro at this. I would say because whatever biggest fire is going on is probably yeah. getting most of my attention. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's more a matter of like uh, the first year of any, you know, initiative is going to get a lot of my attention. So, you know, for even like, and it usually filters down, right? So for myself, and I'm usually going to hand it off to one of you and my direct reports, Chuck is obviously taking on the, like all the corporate locations and yeah. the, the executive model. Um, and then you and him together kind of taking on franchise training or franchise um, coaching. You're taking on the sales side. Liz really handles command center. 
Um, and then, you know, obviously the same thing like the gym, et cetera. There's people that are managing stuff. Zach takes a lot in terms of the media, et cetera. So um, the first year or two, though, typically I'm very, it, like it, everything is going through me. And so yeah. it's when it's in its kind of infinite stages or, or like uh, um, infant stages, I'm, I'm handling it a lot more. And then you guys don't even hear about it. So, for example, like you guys aren't really even in the loop on much on like the AI stuff that we're doing for the right. phone calls and stuff like that, because like I'm very much hands on. Every single thing is going through me. I'm in there with the developers. I'm literally on the recording, like listening and trying to figure stuff out. Um, mm -hmm. And then eventually that will get passed on by Liz because she's in command center. And then like, I will not deal with them. I'll hand off the contacts from the development team and move on. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Copilot. Like, um, you know, I'm developing uh, someone that could do that underneath me as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think George is kind of priming for that position in terms of uh, being able to be my liaison. And so right now it's taking hours and hours of my day. Um, and I would say probably five hours a day, four or five hours a day is spent exclusively on co-pilot stuff. Mm -hmm. And so um, and then probably more, but um, uh, that will eventually come down too, right? As the, as we catch up to what I've always said, like 2023, we got to play catch up. And we like so much iterations and we're changing stuff and we're breaking stuff. And today I'm taking calls multiple times while I'm out doing stuff. Um, mm -hmm. That was a change. I'll be able to hand more of that off to George. And then I, I basically can hand off more operations and focus more on the strategy because the strategy was where the real value is. But the beginning, I need to understand operations, right? Mm -hmm. Like I understand enough about command center to like answer 99% of questions. Then like, there's one like mastermind this morning. I was like, Hey, Liz, please chime in here. If I'm saying this mm -hmm. wrong, right. Cause she's obviously now taking operations off my plate so I can focus more on strategy. And so that just becomes more and more over time. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people don't like that. Like, um, same thing like when people start stepping out of their business in daily ops, um, customers don't like it and they want to, they want mm -hmm. you to do the job. Same thing is with me, right. People will be unhappy when like, I'm not as involved uh, and I don't know every nut and bolt of certain things because I'm handing off, off operations and I focus on strategy. Right. But that's where the real value is in the long term. But in the, the beginning part, I do try to get really, really dirty with what's going on. So I do understand it a little bit better. Yeah. Would that's you a very long answer to your question? No, no, no. It's good. It's good. Yeah, I, I, I've been listening to a lot of a diary of a CEO, so I don't want this to turn into like, a, you know, a therapy session. <laughs> but because I feel like uh, what's the guy's name who does it, Steven or something? Steven, I don't, I don't, yeah, Steven, uh, just phenomenal, very well read, very eloquent, great questions. But I feel like his all his like proverbial cop out question is like, Do you think that framework stems from and then like asks, you know, about like childhood trauma or asks about like, um, you know, um, what's it called? Um, open ended questions dude let's go huh <laughs> open ended questions yeah open ended questions exactly well no i, I was going to say um, do you feel like it, that what your answer do you feel like that stems from like the fact that you need to prove that you can do it like i am in the operations i build it i'm in the mud as you said so you need to prove like i can do it i can build it i can understand it so that way later down the road, you can hand it off and have that like confidence, you know what you're talking about. Um, it's, it's a few things. That's, that's probably part of it. Part of it's probably fear of the financial aspect. Cause typically I'm most involved when we're losing money. Um, so there, that, the, that it, probably a mix of those two things. And then like a very small portion of it would be like, there's no one else that can move as quickly because they don't have all the different facets of the business. And that's, mm. that's true, but I overemphasize that. I know that for a fact. Um, but it's definitely something you feel in the moment. It's like, okay, I'm the only one that has this. Like, for example, Copilot. I'm the only one in my brain where it's like, okay, I understand what command center needs. I understand what the user needs. I understand what the owner needs. I also understand, like, from a business perspective, what other um, industries. And I'm the only one who understands the AI side right now. And um, I just know that I'm overthinking that. Um, mm -hmm. But also... I, if I try to delegate that right now, it would slow things down. Mm -hmm. So, but it's more probably, it probably, I'd say it's 60% when we're losing money that I'm more, I get more hands on because um, I'm afraid. And that's just the truth. Yeah, fair. So if someone does have multiple businesses, I kind of came up with another question is, would you base your prioritization? So to go back to the quote from the video, recalibrate how you handle the businesses as would you base your prioritization of businesses on like fires 
Uh, like in terms of you're fixing things, you're just you just have to fix all this stuff. The fires are happening, so you have to make that a priority. Would you say fires, revenue stream, or passion? How would you categorize um, the priorities of your business based on those three? The latter two have zero factor whatsoever. Um, it'd be a mix of the first two, um, which you can re recite to me again, not I forget. <laughs> no, so it's, it's, it's just it's just three. It's like fires or things going wrong. I couldn't think of something better to say. Failure, maybe uh, preventing failure, revenue stream, and um, passion. Got it. So it's really just number one then. So really, it's like, what is the biggest fire in the micro? That's what I'm going to spend my time on. Um, I guess then what I was thinking in my head is, I, I guess it would be kind of number three. I wouldn't call it passion, but I would call it um, objectives. So like right now, like the main objectives for me are one, co-pilot two co-pilot three make sure it's ready for augusta right yeah. and so like that's all i'm focused on right i know that that liz has a good handle on command center um i know you and chuck are handling the the um the support tie of things with the, the franchisees and then you with the sales side um and then the corporate locations etc so um i am simply looking at okay i have two months until we have locations inside of a if, inside a co-pilot and i have six months until we need to move, we need to be able to move like, oh, hunt, uh, like tens of millions of dollars worth of revenue into it. And so um, that's my number one objective right now. The same way that like last year was fix everything at command center with Liz, create departments, systematize mm -hmm. things, et cetera. Yeah. Are we, you, I feel like you were alluding to the building too, that we're building into the, the new headquarters a little bit. <laughs> Dude, the, that's so like not even on my radar right now. It's, I don't even funny. want to bring up. I know, I know. You got so much to, to think about right now. I feel bad bringing it up, but. <laughs> I did I did email the contractors today just to kind of, it, we're still waiting on wetlands. Like literally we have everything ready to go. So yeah. it's frustrating, but that's why you have a contractor too. Like I trust the contractor. They they, they know I'm, I just want the thing done. So um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So uh, um, anyways, let's switch it up. Thanks for letting me probe. I think you're doing great down there. But uh, I, had to, I had to ask some questions because that video was pretty heavy, if you will. So <laughs> um, Lawn Site, let's move on to topic number two. So uh, Lawn Site is essentially the Reddit well, of Lawn Let Care. me preface this conversation. Go for, for it. everyone listening, you do not need to go on there and defend me. All right. We do not need a bunch of people going and saying Mike is nice and he's not this way and you guys are losers. Please don't do that. Um, it's 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 not helpful at all. Sorry, go ahead. Wait, you're you're saying debating on the internet isn't helpful at all? <laughs> really? <laughs> it's what fine. An thought. <laughs> did you did you read through the whole thread today? Yeah, I mean I I, I, I just pulled it up. I don't know if I, I read the whole thread while it was live, while it was happening. Dude, you know what the you want to, you want to see something that's funnier than the thread that you you read today that is two hundred comments long. All right, one is second. It all here. about you or Augusta or no 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 dude this, this is funny this is funny dude oh dude oh man see there's too many now because see once I got on here it was lights off one second um oh, sick let me see if I can't pull this up oh man okay I can't. All I know is this. So I signed up for lawn site. I hadn't been on the site like 10 years. And so I was like, whoa, this thing still exists. I only did it, did it because someone in the comments of your last C-suite unfiltered said I was getting, uh, what was the word? I forget. Like basically people were tearing me apart or I was getting, getting shade. There you go. Yep. And so I went over to lawn site, created an account, hopped in there. And sure enough, there's this thread going off about me and blah, blah, blah. So, um, I'm a big fan of like any controversy about yourself. Just like yeah. go in there, make light of it. Cause like, don't take yourself too seriously. Cause no one else does. Um, and I do, I do believe that most people on the internet are just like, they're just, they have way more confidence. They would never say these things to my face right. ever. And so when you, you can just, you know, and if, and if someone actually wants to be deliberately mean and bad and say horrible things, I always bring it back to my gut. My brain is no, there's no really, really successful person that punches down. They're like you're, you know, you're, you people that say theft about Elon Musk, it doesn't even phase him because like he's so far above them. Yeah. Right. The only time that you would ever like retort or come back is because you're not that great. And it's like mm -hmm. what, with Tigran's thing, I took all my videos down. Like this is this is small boy potatoes, right? Yeah. And so, um, 
And I'm still learning that. Like I'm still, there's still things I've done wrong. Like even with my content and stuff where it's like, okay, that was like small boy stuff. And yeah. so anyways, hopped in on, on the stream, to commented back and forth to them. Like I did like five or six posts. And then like, I came back six or seven hours later and there's like pages more like, oh my word. So then I comment more. This is the funny part. I wake up the next morning. Cause now that I've created an account, people can tag you. Big oh, mistake. Geez. Big mistake. So I turned that, I turned off where I don't get notifications in my email anymore because the next morning was a bunch. Anyways, the one that caught my attention was Good Morning Mike. And it was a different, it was a different uh, name of a thread. Like it was a new thread. Someone created a new thread called Good Morning Mike and was like, you know, sometimes you just need a new thread to kind of shift the energy in the direction of who's getting on this channel. Mike, you say, want to say good morning and welcome to Lonsite. It's so <laughs> funny, dude. Uh, I'll try to find it, but... um. It was great. I was very entertained. So. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I uh, I definitely want to find that. So, yeah, I mean, you got you you got some drama. I, I appreciate the sentiment there. I think you handled it well. I don't really have like the specific comments to pull up or anything. We don't have to dive into it because internet drama is arguably one of the biggest wastes of times in the history of mankind. Like, just being honest. Um, Busy B Lawn Service. A loyal subscriber to the C-Suite Unfiltered tipped us off. He said, Mike's getting some shade on lawn site. Someone basically dragging you, Augusta, that the 3F program is like multi-level marketing, like all sorts of just baseless claims. And you just hopped in there and just made light of it. So was there any was there any favorite part you had in that? Like, I, I don't want to drag anyone online, but. No. Um, dude, I, I wish I could find the second thread. It's just now there's too much. So anyways, um, no, my favorite part. Um, so how it kind of started is first and foremost, someone said something. I created an account and responded like yeah. finally, right? And then he's like, oh, that's not suspicious. Uh, I, I, I mentioned Mike Gandy's and then someone creates an account. Do you, uh, do you wrote me to like, basically, like, do, you really, do you really think I believe it's you? So yeah. I literally took out my, my remarkable and yes. I wrote down his username. I said, hi, so and so. And I just took a picture yeah. and smiled. And then um, that just blew up the thread. <laughs> so it was fun. It was fun, dude. Like I, I don't, I don't take it too seriously. And yeah. so um, I, th that's what I would want of an influencer, someone that can like just not, not be so serious. Like people were saying things about Augusta and saying it's a multi-level pyramid screen. But, but what, what was happening is the person that originated the entire thread, the entire thread, was saying that you needed to work for Augusta for two years, then you could become a franchisee and pay twenty thousand. I was like, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. You work for tw for two years, you get it for free, and I cover all the legal costs of training and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. Um, and so, anyways, it it was uh, fun. So I had some serious like uh, comments back to some of the things that were factually incorrect about Augusta. But when they came against me, like I just make light of it. Like I'm sure, oh, yes, you know, I'm I was in diapers last time I was on lawn site. Yes, like it, that's funny. Like yeah, yeah. so you just <laughs> lean into it. It's fun. So yeah. The the writing the guy's actual username on your pad and then taking a selfie with it <laughs> like a goat. Move. That was so good because he's like probably not even real. Like da 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 da. It's like no, nah, it's me. I'm right here. Like I loved that move. You also invited him to do this. You invited. Oh him yeah, to dude. That, yeah. So he did. So before the the before the image uh, I took, I literally just I was I was doing the um, mastermind. So I opened mm -hmm. up literally on the mastermind. I opened up another. Um, uh, Streamyard link, and I sent the link on the the, the uh, thread. I said, "Hey, just join me on the link." And um, of course, he interpreted it as like, "You're just driving traffic to your YouTube channel." Yeah. Like, dude, it's a private Streamyard link. I was just gonna say hi. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, I feel like more people should do that on the internet. Just call people out. Be like, "Hop in my Zoom room." <laughs> <laughs> you're beefing. Here's my Zoom link. <laughs> Hop in. Oh, yeah. Man. Now, I, I just think it's like. This is just a general takeaway because the lawn site didn't even know it existed to be a hundred percent. I did not know it existed. And my, like one of my least favorite things in life is like echo chambers. And I just hate when you get these communities where it's just the same people saying the same things to the same people. Like it's just, there's no value in that. No one's pushing back. No one's educating. And it's like literally AugustaLawnCareServices.com slash franchise. 
all your questions would be answered yet some random guy on an internet thread with no like identification whatsoever is telling you that it's a pyramid scheme. Like it just makes no sense to me. Like one of the, my favorite comment from someone was that they were like, if you take a minute to look into him, you realize it's a scheme. And I'm like, you clearly have not taken a minute to actually look into him because it's not. So, right. So that's the stuff that just bothers me. And then when they come at you having worked for you, I'm an employee, like all the stories about employees and the scam and the this and the that and taking money. It's like, this is not true. Like I would not work for you if those things were true. It just wouldn't. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's actually very difficult to pull off any sort of scam or Ponzi scheme. It's very, very difficult. Um, the reason for that is because great people are required to build anything, anything of size. Mm -hmm. And so um, typically how it works, like a, an actual Ponzi or a scheme or like a, a real, uh, a malicious type of business model is you only really have two to five people in the know mm -hmm. um, of what's going on. So for example, like Barry Stearns, there were very good employees that just did not know that there was bad things happening um, and that the, the company was over leveraging. There's people involved in like Bernie Madoff stuff like that was doing the work, but had no idea that they were doing fraudulent activity. Right, and right. so um, the bottom line is, it's very rare that you can do that because usually you need a lot of people and therefore you need great people to build something big. And so if we're going to build something big and I think I need good people, like there's no way I can keep them if I'm doing fraudulent things. Right. right. So, um, but again, these are, these are the type of details that you're not going to put in, no. in a, in a thread like that. So you kind of lean into it, you make light of it. And then the only thing I really went after and not like defending, but just like explaining was Augusta stuff. Cause like, I'm not going to have that bash. They can say whatever they want to be. I think it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Um, but not Augusta. That, that's a little, that's crossing the line. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think I'm that way too. Like Augusta, it's, 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 I think for you, because I know you could take that public facing like scrutiny. That's, that's, that's comes with the territory, right? You've put yourself out there. You're on YouTube, you're on social media. Like you have to expect, some element of public scrutiny but it's like when they come in augusta i take it personally because i represent the brand i take it personally for the franchisees who represent the brand all the great people i get to work with like then i'm like no 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 you 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 go at mike respectfully you go at me even but like don't go at augusta and the people that work there and, and so i think i'm in step with you there <laughs> yeah and then like they, they have valid points too like i said about things in the past that i've done that are, i'm not proud of like um and not necessarily that I'm not proud of, but like that, that can be taken wrong and that I've stopped doing. So for example, like I used to share all my numbers up until like 2020. Um, and the problem is like, like in that thread, people are like, he brags about his numbers, he's egotistical and like his proud. And I, I always did that because I wish that's what someone would do when I was starting mm -hmm. out, like to give me inspiration. And that's like what 95% of people probably got from it. But um, I stopped doing it for that reason. And it's, it does look that way, right? The same mm -hmm. way when someone gets on there, like, I'm making millions of dollars because that's what it has become. And if right. you say that now, um, and there's always then the, the flip side, people are like, he doesn't share his numbers anymore. He must be like fraudulent. So I said, I said look, look, the franchisees, they get to see the profit and loss statement at the end of the year. That's it. They're the only people I feel accountable to. Outside of that, like, you, you know, I don't really care about what your opinion is about my finances. So, um, and if the franchisees have questions, they can ask me and I'll mastermind and I'll tell them. So, um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair. Law on site. Check out the thread, but that's not <laughs> us calling anyone to no, action. No, yeah, please Doing don't. That. Please don't. I want to be it's, very clear about that. Yeah, no, no, no. You, you will no. go on there. I do not have a burner account. You will not see a Lee Park account. <laughs> like, I don't interact on that stuff because I literally think it's the biggest waste of time, but I'm not calling out people to go and defend Mike or Augusta. Like, if you yeah, feel no. like you want to chat with people, keep it respectful, <laughs> keep it light, or just, I don't know, do something productive with your time like not wasting it on the internet and chat rooms. My opinion. <laughs> my opinion. Um, all right. Apple vision pro. So did you see the release? I did. Yeah. Uh, initial thoughts. Let's just jump in. Let's just go. Um, I, I right now, I don't think it's super useful. Um, Apple is always really good at taking something that seems a little far off though and making it applicable. Uh, they've done that for multiple devices. Um, and so like, like, for example, you know, they were the ones that cut the cord from the iPhone uh, and that was crazy at the time. And now it's like, what, like, it, I never miss my cord, never, ever miss my cord uh, for earphone jack. And so 
uh, same thing with the Apple Watch. Like there was plenty of watches, uh, smart watches before Apple Watch came along. Uh, now they just like dominate the market. Um, mm-hmm. Same with AirPods, et cetera. So yeah. um, whether or not they, I think they can do it. They will bring it mainstream and they always start off really high price. It's the way that you price skim. You take the early adopters, you make high margins that then feeds R&D to be able to bring the cost down. So it makes perfect sense. Everyone's freaking out of the price. Um, I look at it and I think when that dollar amount can come get down enough, like robotics, which this will come down a lot sooner than robotics because the technology is there. I would love to be able to train guys like for landscaping using them. Um, yeah. And that's like, hey, um, you know, your first six hours is going to be in this room with this headset on. And you're going to hold this weed whacker and we're able to train them. And you literally have a person that is virtually, you know, augmented reality, walking them through. Okay, here's this mo- this line, edge along this. Okay, here's this property, mow here, go, right? Um, and, mm-hmm. and it doesn't require an actual field day of training or an expensive trainer, um, which is typically your most experienced crew members or potentially the owner. So that gets very interesting to me. Um, but I think we're at least three to five years away from that being a reality. And uh, I think it's very early. I think they crushed Facebook and Oculus that has spent so much money doing this uh, mm-hmm. and has had very, very little success. So we'll see what happens. I think, um, you know, if they didn't mention gaming very much, which was surprising no. to me. So I wonder about the the power of the, the, the processor chip uh, for now. And mm-hmm. I will also wonder about its performance um, because it only has a two hour battery. Right. And so... That, that will improve though. Like the one that they have in 2025 will be light years ahead of this first version. And that's when it starts getting interesting. And mm-hmm. the same way that there was chat GPT one and there was chat GPT two, but no one cared about until chat GPT three. So that's what'll happen. I think like in this space, same thing. It'll be a few years of innovation, high at cost. Mm-hmm. And then they'll make one that's cheap and has really good functionality and utility and uh, it'll crush. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. Some of the initial reactions that I looked up on like, uh, CNBC, Yahoo Finance, like obviously seeing the initial reactions in the stock market, the stock price did dip three to four percent. Um, it's like an all time high still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I was like, well, as soon as I saw the release too, I was like, oh, people are going to hate that by the dip. And then I was like, oh, well, Apple's still all time high. Like, there's no, like a three to four percent dip was nothing for them. Um, but yeah, I, and I think what they did say hurt the stock price was ever the major investors were expecting a large announcement at the beginning, um, which is kind of a classic Steve Jobs. But I guess what um, Cook decided to do was do Ocu- or not Oculus Vision Vision Pro Vision Plus whatever they're calling it um, at the end. He was like, let's te- let's pretend we don't have this big launch, and then we're gonna uh, tease it at the end. Um, but initial reactions, you're right. No, like gaming or recreational element was pushed. It was clearly a business push. They were showing people at desks with Zoom meetings, um, with like calendar links, with um, what's the big, uh, like not, uh, what's the big, like LinkedIn, like a bunch of different products like that on the screen. It wasn't clearly recreational use. So I think that hurts general public take. They're like, "Uh, I don't know if I really want to spend $3,500 $3,500 on something if I'm not, you know, running a Fortune 500 company. Um, so they didn't show a lot of recreational use. That's, in, in my opinion, because because the price point, you're not going to be selling to the the average 18-year-old gamer a $3,500 mm-hmm. device, um, as well as the companies that are highlighted in those enterprise-level apps like Zoom, LinkedIn, et cetera, have the resources to put a team of programmers to actually make software that's useful. Whereas if you're going to create a gaming thing, which most of which lose money um, in terms of the gaming apps, they do not have the resources to throw an entire dev team into Mm -hmm. creating just for this app or for the, for this device. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is you got big heavy hitters like Disney walk in that do have the resources to do it. And, um, that that's a huge play like that's Facebook right. lack that massively. <clears throat> and so um, in my opinion, Apple will be the leader in this market. Uh, they have, they're always slow to adopt new changes, but they, when they come out, they are well perfected. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and, it, and it's definitely not an accident that this, the launch is still seven to eight, nine months away. I, yeah. Cause what they're doing is they're, they're, they're looking at all the feedback right now. They're literally like, okay, let's put this out there. Let's see what happens. And then we have an entire half a year to still 
knock this out of the park. Right. And so they're going to crush it. They, they're masters at this whole game of customer experience um, and understanding what the customer needs. And I think it came through that this is the best by far of what's out there in terms of AR. Uh, and now it's a matter of put it in the hands of developers because developers are really what makes it useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A couple of personal takeaways is uh, I loved the tagline, welcome to the era of spatial computing. That was a phenomenal tagline, like marketing team, great wording. Um, however, I did go onto their website and I scrolled through the whole page of all the information, the design, the technology, right? It's very cool to see how they put those uh, pages together just from a website design perspective, but also to see some of the information. So under the section designed by Apple, thought this was kind of funny for people that are a little, uh, you know, uh, people need to go out and touch grass more, right? They need to stop being on the internet. They need to stop living in a virtual reality. They literally call it an enclosure. Bad choice of words. Very bad choice of words. They, it was like designed by Apple. Let's look at the enclosure. They got like, it's just like enclose yourself in Apple. Like you don't need the outside world. Thought that was a bad choice of words personally. Don't know what your take is on that. I thought it was funny too. They they showed a lot of like literally you can take photos Mm -hmm. um from the device and then play them back in 3d which is very interesting because you can like almost relive time yeah um but, but, but can you imagine going to like i don't know a wedding and some guys wearing glasses yeah on his face, right so like um it, it always starts off like, like that will never happen no one will ever go through the social uh norms and wear something like that to a wedding or a birthday mm -hmm or graduation you got grandma's over there with her goggles on <laughs> yeah that's not going to happen so but this will always come down right like eventually they'll it will look like this right? right and eventually they will have clear and eventually it will get good enough on the projection where this can be clear you can see someone's eyes they can quickly turn on and off the, the projection in front of their eyes and so this is like you no know, v1 right and uh yeah. they'll get there and the same way if you compare it to the first mac uh, uh laptop from, from apple right the apple uh, iMac, like it's it's night and day now. So uh, it'll just be a matter of time. It'll it'll get very close to this, and that's when it will take over. Is when you got this for you know probably fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, you can wear it all the time. You can get prescription. Uh, you can get the projection on right. there. Uh, you can filter on and off, and it's it's much more uh, PC when it comes to the environment. Yeah. Yeah. My, my second personal takeaway was in all the demo videos, they're showing a user with the headset on. And then everyone they're talking to is like just doing a standard FaceTime video. So I'm like, so the user is just the idiot with the goggles on. But, did, but you know what, what was being done there, right? Like yeah. it was like, it was taking, so, like so mapping their face. Right. And it's like, they, they're they not like, a hot, yeah, exactly. It's taking like what's behind the goggles and like replacing it. Cause there's not an actual camera facing them. Right. Yeah. Um, what's crazy. I thought is, there's actually a screen because it's not translucent. Mm -hmm. um, the screen, there's actually a screen facing outwards. And what it does is it um, is simply taking what's on the inside of the goggles mm -hmm. and making a screen on the front to people outside. So when, wow. when, when they were showing people and you could see their eyes, it is not, it is not transparent or translucent. It is opaque. But the reason you saw their eyes is because there's a screen facing outwards that is projecting into their eyes and then <laughs> cracking their eyeballs. That's so creepy. <laughs> so can you imagine like if you were from the side angle, it would look like their eyes are like mm -hmm. bugged out <laughs> because the screens are still a couple inches out in front. I'm, I'm trying to do this new thing where I keep track of my like initial reaction specifically for the pod. So this is what I wrote down. So you just look like a rich psycho with it on. Like, yeah. that was like it's all like, like you're rich and you're kind of crazy walking around with this thing on. That was my gut reaction. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that flies in most places now. <laughs> like it's status, right? So like the same totally. way, like having a Blackberry was like such a status move, um, you know, and even like the app on the back of the, the iMac, it doesn't, it's not about the device. It's about the fact that I have the money to buy this. I also am tech savvy enough to understand it. Mm -hmm. um, and I am a early adopter, right? Yes. And so there's a group of people that are not early adopters because they are 
interested in technology. They're early adopters because they want to look cool. And Apple's mastered that, right? And that's why their their uh, launches do so well. Yeah, that's 100% true. So right on. Anything else you got for the people? Otherwise, we'll wrap it with some non-financial advice. Oh, dude, you're going to have to do it first because I, I have to think. My non-financial advice is from Apple's most recent presentation. Uh, so if you're ever public speaking... And I, I feel like uh, this is something that I've, I'm actually not bad at. I could probably get a little bit better at. But every single Apple a presenter had a middle resting position. The hands were either like here or at the belt or across like the stomach or like folded like this in front. All of them were clearly trained to have that center resting position. And it was beautiful those are those little subliminal things that you don't pick up as the viewer but it shows continuity it shows confidence it shows that they're all in line together not only with their bodies but also with the product um just phenomenal execution of presentation so that's been our financial advice if you're public uh speaking find your center line keep your hands quiet and then when tim cook wanted to do a big gesture he would and it has more emphasis very good now here's the question on that point, would you rather have that or would you rather have someone like Eli who's unpredictable, can't communicate very well, can't hold a sentence in a straight line, can be very unpredictable in terms of his energy level when it comes to presenting, but has like crazy big ideas? Like which one, which like, which one is appealing to you more as, okay, let's take it from more from like an investor or public, not like an employee's perspective. Yeah, for, for me, for me, I would enjoy like an Elon more. But for the masses, you have to do it, it, what Apple did, uh, mm-hmm. their presentation skill, um, mm-hmm. because it has to be this perfect product rollout that also appeals to the masses, the public, the shareholders. So I personally prefer someone who maybe is a little more authentic, for lack of a better word. Apple is very polished, but that goes in line with their product. That's what you're buying. You're buying, yeah. like you said, it's status, polish clean, concise, strong, and all their presenters, like if you look, they all came back to center, whether it was here or at the belt line or across the stomach, just, just, it just showed continuity within the team and the product. I liked it. Yeah. I think it has to do with like being on brand, right? It's exactly what you said. It's like they sell a polished product. They have to present it in the way that like, Hey, we're going to have our stuff together. This is not going to be a flop. We figured this out. We know exactly what we're talking about. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be gorgeous. It's going to be amazing. Um, and then you have someone like Elon was like, he's selling the future of going to Mars, you know, having no emission vehicles, mm. um, all of that stuff. And so in that regard, you know, you got to sell the dream and you got to sell it hard and it doesn't matter whether you're centered or if you're left or right or you're, you know, whatever. It's like, you got to get that message across. So it's interesting. It's a good, good point. Okay. Here's the thing that made me think of something. I don't know if this is recent. Did you see the time meet Kevin talk to Elon Musk at a shareholder meeting? Yeah, dude. That- yeah. That was recent. Yeah. Talked about advertising. Yep. Yeah. He talked about advertising. Like that was like a perfect example of Elon just kind of reacting and be like, oh yeah, sure. I guess we could do it. Yeah. He, Literally he was, on the stage of a shareholder meeting is like, yeah, we should spend some money on advertising. I think that's a good idea. Everyone cheers. Like, sounds like everyone wants to do it. We'll just spend more money on advertising. <laughs> like that is polar opposite of what we just yeah. saw with Apple. Per- totally. Perfect like dichotomy of yeah. successful businesses. <laughs> but this is what's interesting, right? So like there's pros and cons of both, right? So like Obviously, there's pros to what Apple did. Like, it's very buttoned down, et cetera. And for all we know, half of what they were showing is completely staged. So, like, the first iPhone could not connect correctly. So, like, they hard programmed the right. fact that it had five bars of data and the time was hard coded. Like, it was a big show, right? Mm-hmm. And then with someone like Elon, there's definitely downsides to your CEO in front of a shareholders meeting being like, yeah, we should do that's a good idea. Like, we'll just do that. Right. Um, but then it's like, the authenticity level is huge. Mm -hmm. And like you would never have a broken window like they did at the Cybertruck release. You'd never have that Apple. Everything is buttoned down and perfect. And they literally were in the back room testing out the window right before the the meeting. Like that would never happen at at Apple. That would never happen. And if it did happen, it'd be way off brand. Whereas when it happened with Tesla, uh, yeah, Tesla, like it was completely fine because they're so authentic that that happening was probably a very positive thing them for them from a PR perspective and from mm-hmm. like, hey, we don't show, we don't like make this stuff up. We like literally threw our beta test out there and broke the window. And yeah. like, that's fun. <laughs> that's funny, right? And so I think it's just, it's about being on brand because like 
Tesla could not do what Apple did, like and button everything down. Everyone would be like, they've lost heart, they've lost innovation. There's no more, you know, creative thinking. And then Apple can't do what Tesla did because the people were like, this device is way overpriced and it's not going to work and it's like glitchy and all that sort of thing. Yeah, I think I'm, I may be overstepping. I think that's a, a great way that you and I balance each other out, though. <laughs> you're, you're a Tesla. I'm out <laughs> in terms of how we would want to present something big. Like, I'm like, let's make it polished. Let's make it clean. <laughs> keep it tight. And you're like, roll it out, baby. <laughs> let's go. So. Um, non-financial advice. I had one and I lost it. Dude, sick. We went on that great tangent and we just lost it. It was a good tangent. I mean, that could be our non-financial advice. Just wrap it Dude, there. Dude, I had good non- non-financial advice too, man. It was stacking up. Um, oh, here's some, non- here's some financial non-financial advice. Great. Love um, it. Tech is in a very much of an upward trajectory in the stock oh, yeah. market. And so if you bought any time in the last 12 months, you might want to think about trading out because you're probably 50 to 50 to 80% up. Um, so I haven't sold for a long time until just recently. And um, I don't think this is the top. I do think we're going to keep continue to go up because as soon as the Fed so like, I think they'll they'll, they'll uh, raise rates one more time in July. And I think they'll pause and I think they'll start cutting rates again by the end of the year. And mm-hmm. when that happens, you're probably going to get more hot, more upside. But I would be careful. And this is my not financial advice. It's not necessarily to sell out because I'm I literally have sold ten to fifteen percent of my portfolio. Mm-hmm. It is be careful of doing what everyone did two years ago, and as as it goes up, you jump under lousy stocks. Yeah. So I would highly recommend looking at what did well in 2020, the end of 2021 and beginning of 2022. And those are the stocks you're watching. So that if we, if, if there's any sort of downside that you're going to buy into on an upswing that you look at those stocks, um, because it's going to be, it's going to get right back. I guarantee it in three to six months, as we come out of the stock market correction, and we're going to start going into a real estate correction. As that happens, you're going to have all that same momentum and people talking about all sorts of stupid stuff again. Um, so just be careful. Yeah, definitely. Good point. I love it. Fantastic. Well, thank you for your time, sir. That's it. Like and subscribe. Sweet. Thanks for all your work on the home front. I appreciate oh, yeah. it. We're doing it. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. Have a good one.